Director of the Bank of Jamaica, Air Jamaica, Lasco, and founding chairman of the JUTC, who did not even attend high school, but who ended up with an MBA in corporate finance with distinction. Keith Cena tells his story on profile. Welcome, I'm Ian Boyne. Keith, good to have you on the program. When, when, when one reads your, 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 your CV, it, it, it's almost uh, surreal. Uh, you, you are a person never attended high school, not just that you attended but didn't pass any exam, didn't pass the common uh, entrance. Between 14 and, and, and 16, you, you were an unattached. Um, you just roam in the streets. At 16, you were working in a in a in a factory um had a hard time uh, matriculating eventually reached um cars but didn't leave with any um impressive certification but you ended up doing your first uh two degrees in in record time and attaining both of them at the honors um level how does one do that? <laughs> Simple application. Application. Application, application, application. Yes. Preparation. Yes. You get absorbed in everything that you're doing. It's almost like unity consciousness where you and whoever you're involved with, just one. So what had happened to those, those years of underachievement? Um, you, 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 you said to me off ear that the first time you, you read a book, was when you were a teenager? Well, I suppose the first, let's say 12, 13 years of my life were just taken up with the work ethic. You're working? Work. From a work child? From age five or six. Five or six, in a, in a shop? I was in a shop, my aunt's shop. I had to stand on a crate to reach the level where I could serve. <laughs> and I would be in the shop from six o'clock in the morning until 8.30 to get ready to go to primary school. Mm -hmm. And by 12 o'clock, I would be back on the street delivering things to the beach. Mm -hmm. And I would come back and I would work in the shop until 3 or 4 o'clock. And perhaps if I'm lucky, a little time to play. So that was your life. So your that early life, life your, 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 your childhood years were taken up in, 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 in work. Work, just work, work, work. Child labor rather than, than, yes. than studying. It was very useful because whatever i could accomplish in business oh. i learned everything in terms of buying and selling yes. measuring calculating you have to do everything in your head mm. Mm. i mean i used to have to cut stuff and measure stuff and therefore you can't give away an ounce yes. so you learn how to be precise in everything that you're doing so your your, your bookkeeping background was from, from those days? From those days, those yes. days as, as, as a child? Yes, and to even give you the, the level of responsibility that I had, I had the keys for the shop. Mm -hmm. So I would six, leave seven. from the house, <laughs> and I would be <laughs> stepping up to get to the thing to open it. In addition to which, we also had, we had pigs and we had fowls, so I had to yes. feed them in the mornings, get them ready, go into the shop, because people within our vicinity would come to buy their things for breakfast. <coughs> That's Ola so, Bay. Ola mm -hmm. So we had to have all of those things ready. And then I had to be running from there, you know, back to the house to get ready to go to school. It was just about 50 yards from my house to the school. So but you didn't have interest in school, Keith. You didn't have interest fun. in school. I mean, I, in fun. fact, I would tell you today, I never want to grow up. I just want to be a child all my life. Are you a troublemaker? <laughs> <laughs> that, Yes. <laughs> that, that's what you got into at school uh, rather than got yes, in, yeah. got getting into the books. Yeah. So you did the common entrance but failed? Yeah, I suppose I had a couple of opportunities. But I don't know. They might have passed. Because your parents didn't take particular interest in your education. They, they, they weren't pushing right. you, whether through their own ignorance or, or, or what. But you, you didn't have that motivation yeah. from home no, to study. You right. didn't have books around the house. No, no it didn't come up. <clears throat> the only thing I could remember reading was the Bible. 
Oh, not even that. <laughs> <laughs> the World Affairs page in the newspaper. Oh. And I used to listen to the BBC, BBC. at 8 o'clock and at 6 o'clock each day. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so I had a feel for World what Affairs. What was happening mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. So after you left primary school, you were just not doing anything? <coughs> Absolutely nothing. No. So just... So for years you were just unoccupied with us? And were you still living in Olaba Bay at that time? Between Olaba Bay and Kingston. You were also in Kingston? Yeah. And where in Kingston did you live? Um, Three Mile, Ashoka Road, Varma Road, that area. Okay, yes. So tell us uh, about your experience at 16 when you went to work in a factory. What kind of factory was that? This was Ludlow Corporation. It was a textile, textile. Ah, yes. factory. Mm -hmm. They imported raw materials from Bangladesh. And then they <coughs> convert it into carpet backing. Yes. And then export it to the States. Mm. So Ludlow Corporation originated from Needhamite in Massachusetts. And they supplied the thing back to themselves. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and what kind of work you did in the factory? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? My first job, when I was interviewed, the guy said, we are going to give you the job as a stock handler, whatever mm. that means. Yes. All my other contemporaries were getting jobs, technical fixing machines. And yeah, yeah. So when I went to job, the first night, the guy gave me a broom. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what am I to do with this? I'm a stock handler. <laughs> he said, you see those things there? You were just stuck <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went on dutifully. I must say, I had a little resistance. Because I said, well, clearly, if all my other contemporaries, all people that went to school with me were doing other things then. But I kind of saw it as character building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, because part of it, of course, let's say, for the want of a better word, I was a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. And the family things were not going as well as they should have. Oh. And I suppose I wanted to make a name for myself. Yeah. And I wanted to show that it could be done with nothing. And, and let me say this, when I took the job, it was one shilling per hour. Uh -huh. mm. So when I worked the first shift, which was night, 40 hours, I got two pounds. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was 1963. Yes, a lot so, of money. But nonetheless, it was one yeah. shilling per hour. Yes, yes. And of course, from that one shilling per hour, I saved 75 pounds in less than two years. You saved 75 pounds? 75. Which would help you then to, to go on to do some studies. Exactly. So that was the whole idea. And I wanted to say, it, I can do it on my on own, own without any help from anybody. Very and good. I think that has made me into what I am today, in that I think independently, I act independently, yes. and I believe that there's nothing that I cannot do if I apply my mind This is what believe. That once you apply it, your your mind and your energy to something you can achieve Can't it no matter what it is <clears throat> and and you have a lifetime to to, to to show because you 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 started without anything mm -hmm. not only without material assets but without the educational um foundation uh, yeah for foundation mm -hmm. and then you 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 began to do what was it what the rsa yeah was that simple bookkeeping you bookkeeping. started bookkeeping yeah, bookkeeping mm -hmm. But remarkably, did did very well. Yes, mm -hmm. at first grade, and then you did um, RSA two, yeah, and first grade also. Tell us a yeah. bit about that and the lessons from. Well, that. well, just to backtrack a little, because when I was working at the factory, the opportunity came up for me to do a little study part time. There was a school in Olaba called Olaba Academy, and what I discovered there was something called bookkeeping, mm -hmm. and I thought this was putting into context pretty much. All of my what you been doing as a child. As a child, and you, you buy things, you sell things, and how you calculate profits. And then I was in this textile manufacturing. I spent all the time going through all the different facets of the business, understanding it. So when I saw bookkeeping, it looked to me as a language of describing what was going on in the it's business. So it fascinated me. At this point. Keith Cena is well known in the corporate um, world, has worked on a number of um, uh, privatization um, initiatives including Air Jamaica <laughs> and as well as the, the, the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation predecessor to, uh, to, to TVJ um, well known as a contrarian um, had his battles with very important people in this 
uh, society. Tell us, tells us more when we come back from our break. Keith Senior is the man whose ideas resulted in the creation of the uh, JUTC, and in fact, he was its first uh, chairman. Has had a lot of experience in in the public and private sector, and the man who continues to be um, controversial. Some some would say are even litigious, <laughs> but I'm not even going to go into some of the um, some of the controversial things. But yes, yes. you're a man known to have your strong opinions. I mean, you've bought it, but Ed's with some very, very important people in this um, society. But that's another uh, thing. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about the, the, the journey. So you did the, the, the books, the simple bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any <clears throat> CXC or, or, or anything. And I think at the break you were going I just giving further. you how that's I got right. attached to bookkeeping. That is right. And how the discovery came about. And I fell in love with it, and I decided to resign the job and um, come to Jamaica School of Commerce in Kingston oh. with my 75 pounds that I saved. Yes, and yes. I said, no, this is going to be the investment in myself. <clears throat> so I went to the Jamaica School of Commerce. I registered to do the RSA bookkeeping. Okay. And when it was time for the exam, I said to the master, well, I would love to do stage one and stage two at the same time. And he said, Ah, it's take it easy. Yeah. You, you, you have not covered stage two yet. One <laughs> and two, stage one as a prerequisite for stage two. Oh, oh. So I said, where can I go to have this thing done? And I said, well, you could go to Kingston Technical High School. So I went there and I said, I'm registered for stage two. So have you done stage one? No, but I would like to do stage two. So I registered. So of course, when the result came back, I went down there. I got a first class pass for stage two, uh -huh. although I was not supposed to. So I took it to my teacher, yes. and he said, can he get the result? I said, why? This is mine. He said, no, 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 no. I just like to borrow it. And it turns out I was the only student from that cohort which had a first-class pass. So he had to go and brag to his principal and say, here, I have a first-class pass here. So I still stayed on. So when it was time for my regular time, I did it again, and I got another stage too. Yes. And there was another thing was going on at um, Institute of Commerce. Yeah. So I said, I'll do the stage two as well. And I, so in a couple of months, I had it three times. So I said, you know, I'm a good bookkeeper now. I always want to do a trade, but here it is now. I'm a trade bookkeeper. Yes. And, and that would have bolstered your confidence. Yes. But before then, you, you had not succeeded at, at anything academically. So it shows you that once one has an interest and there's application determination, how much can be achieved? Right. And it's, it's, there's a challenge. It was for me now to show this guy who said to me, I cannot do, it. do stage two yes, now yes. because you have not covered the syllabus. And I said, I have time between now and the exam. Right. I'll cover it. And he said, no. I said, watch me. And you did it. So when I said, here's my result. <laughs> so after you had completed all of that, mm -hmm. no, uh, where did you go to work? I what just was after? standing out in front of the school one day. I saw a friend of mine, Horace. Elliot, so what's going on? I said, man, I'm a bookkeeper, man. Here it is. <laughs> yeah. So I said, well, you like a job? I said, I just work right across the building here, that Lockett Avenue on East Street. Yes. You are in company? I said, yes, let's. You so I went there, and next thing I know, I was a bookkeeper. You're a book bookkeeper um, there. Yeah, so I did, it was an accounting firm, so I did books for all the different companies mm -hmm. all over. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I learned a lot of tricks as to what, what, what to do. What to do. And, and was it from there that you had gone on to the then College of Arts, Science and Technology? Well, while I was there, I St. George's Extension had a kind of one-year program for people who were repeating the final year of the, who didn't pass the CXC, yes. then GC. Okay. So I decided to register in there for English and Math oh, with the objective of sitting the class entrance exam. I because I didn't have time to go through and do all of these things. So I said, okay. I don't have the time. And what I'm going to do is March of each year, they have the entrance exam. So I just went and registered, and I passed it, and I entered. But interestingly, in between being at that accounting firm, I decided, why not go back home? So I applied to work with NCB in um, Olaba, Mapin. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Of course, 
no X6, no, nothing of the sort. Yeah. So a friend of mine said, applied. So I went and they gave me perhaps about six hours of testing over four days. Because yeah. they wanted to make sure whether I could read and write yeah, or whatever. Yes. I could probably tell me, yes, I'm a good bookkeeper. And I passed the thing I got. Passed. Got a job, I work in Maypen, but that was kind of okay. Then I came to Olaba in the bank, uh -huh. you know, in my tie and <laughs> yes. white shirt. And all of my former employees now from the factory from who had me there working on the floor with them would come You're in surprised. and say, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> because just a few months ago, you were working on the factory floor. Exactly. And they know you're, you're tying um, yes. NCB. Right. And while I'm in the bank now, you know, you know making my own little waves as usual, Cass wrote to me and said, oh, you're accepted. So I said, you know, something, I don't know if Cass might change their mind about this thing. I'm not taking any chance <laughs> for this thing. So I said, yes, I'm coming. So while I was fully prepared financially, when I came to do the bookkeeping thing, I wasn't totally prepared financially for the cast. But like everything else, I say, if there's a will, there's a way. Mm. And once I start anything, you can guarantee I'm going to finish it. Yes. And what you had enrolled for at cast? Business studies. Business two years. studies, mm -hmm. yes. It was kind of him as I, <clears throat> sorry. I, when I got into cast the first year, the guy who was supposed to continue as treasurer did not continue. So the next thing I know, I was on the student council at cast oh, as a treasurer. Oh, oh. In the first year, everybody just had a by-election and they were told to vote for George Singer and they voted. But you weren't applying yourself very much at class. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> you didn't go to classes? No, no, I didn't go to classes. You didn't go to classes? No, no, I mean, it's kind of sad to be saying because I didn't go to classes. Were, you ended up passing the exams? Yeah, passing the exams, yes. But not didn't do in spectacular? No, no, not at all. But in fact, most people kind of had the impression, yes, in fact, what was very interesting, when I completed the first year, I was in Ligani, and there was a lady across where Wendy's is there now, and I was over Nova Scotia. And this lady was on the top of the fire. Kate, Kate, the entire people look around and say, you pass. You pass. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently, because I didn't go to class or anything. But like. the shock was a big shock <laughs> exactly. you pass. <laughs> so everybody was looking around, wondering what I passed, but she, a girl named De Castro, yeah. and she was at um, class with me. So she had gone and seen the result and saw that I passed. So everybody was in this big thing. You, you, you passed, passed yes. Yeah. But when you needed to go to university in North America, that was a problem because <laughs> the passes weren't good enough. Total, yeah, serious problem. Because I must say this, that I always prided myself on being able to spot exams mm. with such precision that I could write the questions, produce the answers, regurgitate the answers, and they were all correct. And I was living dangerously. I said, pass mark is 40, and I would do nothing more than 40 or 41. I'll tell you better than that. You just said, in, let's take a break. In, in, <laughs> <laughs> An interesting story. I mean, Keith uh, Cena is, uh, is, is, a, is a storyteller. He has more to tell us when we come back. <laughs> Former BOJ uh, director. Um, director of JUTC, in fact, founding chairman of JUTC, Keith Senior, is our guest. So, so there was some difficulty you had in matriculating in at North American yeah. um, uh, universities, uh, more particularly um, Pace. Tell us about yeah, that yeah. and how you overcame. Well, it started at the University of Windsor. They had a Windsor. BCom degree, which prepared you to do the finals for the Canadian CA. Uh -huh. I applied to them and they, they dismissed me. And part of what they were saying that I wasn't qualified enough because then I didn't have one O level. No. No, no O level there no up level. to that time. Yeah. And the cast grades, everything showing at 40, 41 yes. occasionally. So everybody just laughed at that. <clears throat> so then I applied to Pace University in New York and they dismissed me as well. And I decided, well, perhaps accounting might be my destiny. And I said, well, let me go to England. So I applied to the London School of Accounting. I got accepted. I took all routes, went to London, family and everything. Okay. When I got there, I looked at the program and I said, no, not me. That was through the ACCA? The ACCA. And you decided against it? I decided against it. And so I said, what next? I said, I'm going back to New York now to do battle. Uh -huh. So I went to Pace and I said, no, look, you tell me why I cannot get into this place. Yeah. And they said, well, your grades are bad and whatever and whatever and whatever. So I said, let me speak to your boss. And I went to every boss and they all threw me out. So I came back and I contacted a friend of mine. I said, can I speak to the dean of the business school? Uh -huh. 
and they arranged and I sent my resume to him. He looked at him and said, he called him and said, this guy must get into the school. Mm -hmm. So I went down and I said, can I have the letter of acceptance? And they said, huh? We sent it to Jamaica. But I said, you have an address here in the States. They said, no, no. They sent it to a post box in Jamaica, which I had closed several years ago <laughs> because they were trying their best. And one lady said, not over my dead body. You cannot get into the space. Mm -hmm. Until eventually I went back to the dean's office and they arranged for me to get a letter personally. Mm -hmm. So I got into university and four years to do the undergraduate degree, two years complete. You did in two years? Two years, magna cum laude. Magna cum laude? Yeah. Two years? And then I said, no, I want to apply now to go into the business school for two years. MBA. MBA. And they were giving me a little... Because when I did that, no, they wanted to use my cast grade to average it to tell me I can't make it. Oh. I did the GMAT. I said, hey, 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 let's start this thing all over again. Uh -huh. So I said, don't let me have to go back to the dean. So I got my acceptance. So I went in, start January, come out December, complete, MBA, corporate finance, distinction. Distinction in what One time? year. One year, not two. Right. One year. So what was nice about it, at the end of the third year, there was a little Christmas function at the university. So the same... Not over my dead body lady came and she said, ah, oh, Mr. Senior, I, t I suspect now that you have completed three years, you'll be getting ready to go to graduate school. <laughs> I said, finished. may I tell you, could I share something? You with finished I said, I finished graduate school. <laughs> that lady looked at me up and down and she said, this guy must be delusional. And she <laughs> said, have a good Christmas and she went. So I didn't go any further with it. But that was to say, she's telling me not over her dead body because yes. I, she, in fact, she said to me, why don't you go and do the GED? Of course, you know what's a G. <laughs> I said, G D. <laughs> so here it so is now. I'm leaving with my diploma, yes. Keith Senior, Distinction, yes. Corporate Finance, yes. and I'm gone, and she's telling me that I must go and do my G D. Yes. Mm. So your story really shows what can be accomplished yeah. once one has the determination. Determination, application, preparation. All things. And you, you, your work in the, in the corporate world, you've made significant contribution. Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the public sector. So, yeah. Uh, Air Jamaica. You, you worked the, on the privatization of Air Jamaica. Air, mm -hmm. Sugar Estates. The sugar JBC. Estates. And JBC. JBC made significant contribution, as I might have told you off here. Yes. When the JBC was going on, I managed to come at the last minute with something which I call cost to create. Oh. And my good friend is late Richard Evans who was handling the thing. He said, Keith, where are you going with this thing at so late? Mm -hmm. It was enough to help to defray certain expenses which I won't identify <laughs> now. Yes, yes, yes. And you're on the Bank of Jamaica, Bank of Jamaica uh, board, board yes, for yes. about eight or so yes, um, yeah, yeah. Um, years. Looking back at your career, um, Keith, in both the public and private sector, what are your re 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 reflections? In fact, looking back at your journey. Well, I would say, to me, it was very challenging because perhaps my style is a little heavy for some people because I don't have zero tolerance for mediocrity and yes. sub-optimization. Yes. Everything for me must be, it cannot be perfect, but yes. as near as possible to perfection. Yes. So whenever I am dealing with certain things, like, for example, not to be too fought right with it, yeah. but when Jamaica Urban Transit was to come and stream, yes. I had to dig in my heels. It was your minority report? It was a minority report I gave to the Prime Minister. Give the Prime Minister Patrick Because I said to him, PM, we cannot go into the 21st century with what we have on Patrick the road. Because road. when I see what was going on, I, see, I said, no, 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 no. And I feel justly proud. If there's one thing I can say, yes. I feel justly proud. Free, when I see an air-conditioned bus driving and my poor people yes, can sit in there yes, in comfort, I say, you know, well done. The work that you had done. Um, well done. The work that you had and done. I say, I'm glad I took the position because everybody was signing off on a different report. And I said, no, I will not go along with it. Yes. And it was good. Prime Minister Patterson gave me the earring and he listened to me. And him said, Keith Senior, if you feel that strongly about it, give me a minority report. And you did. And, I gave it her. and, and when the report was done, nearly everybody said it couldn't work. And I said, all those who disagree, give it to me in writing. And I still have it. Yes. Because I come from a grandfather named Kukumaka, mm -hmm. who told me that everything of a name of a use. 
So any piece of paper from wherever I see you keep. them forever. <laughs> you keep and of course, I must tell you, I have a book coming out. You have a book coming out also? Yes, and it's a tell-all book. Uh, we will talk more when that book uh, comes out. Um, Keith uh, Senior, another inspiring story on Profile. I have another inspiring story next week. Um, make sure that you are, you are tuned in. Until then, Ian Bourne wishing you a very pleasant and a very productive week.